The Lakers are a different team this year, with the addition of many new faces. So far, it looks like they are even better than last year's championship team. Let's examine how these new players are doing so far and how they are fitting in with the team. Alfonso McKinney was brought onto the team basically as trade filler. Nobody really expects anything of him, and he just plays garbage time. I'll give him a C because he has no defined role, and he plays fine when he's out there. But you can't take away any meaningful data from garbage time. Wesley Matthews gets a C. Wesley Matthews was brought in to be Danny Green's replacement. And a lot of people like to bag on Danny Green, but he actually wasn't that bad. It was just that he was more streaky. Matthews has a similar three-point percentage to Danny Green's percentage last year. And on the defensive end, Matthews is shorter than Green, so there is a height disadvantage. But he is more physical and has shown he can be a solid perimeter defender. He also gets down in the low post every so often. He struggled in the beginning of the season, but his shot seems to be falling now. However, he's not getting many minutes. KCP has solidified himself as a starting two guard and has essentially become Danny Green's replacement, being much more consistent from three and being a solid defender. And recently, Matthews has been losing minutes to Taylor Horton Tucker, who has been showing flashes of greatness. So Matthews may find himself out of the rotation. So he's been okay, nothing special when he's out there. And he definitely didn't meet the expectations of being that starting two guard to replace Danny Green. Marcus Saul gets a C plus. He's been a defensive liability. He's slow footed and has trouble guarding quicker guys, especially when he gets pulled out to the perimeter. But if you expected the defensive player of the year version of Mark, then you just haven't been paying attention closely. Gasol has never been quick or athletic, and to expect that from him now, when he's 36 years old, is unreasonable. If I understood he was going to be a defensive liability when the Lakers signed him, I'm sure Rob Palinka and the rest of the staff understood that as well. He was brought in for his playmaking and his ability to space the floor with his shooting. He's also a big body that allows AD to play the floor for a majority of his minutes. He's opened up the offense so much in ways that guys like Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee couldn't do last year. So he's doing what he was brought here to do, and so far he's meeting expectations. And he actually is able to play defense despite his lack of athleticism. He's still a big body, he can still disrupt shots with his verticality, and he often draws charges. He also uses his IQ and understands where he needs to be, and often he's able to swipe at the ball while it's still down low. With that said, he does still get played off the floor a lot. But so do most centers these days. It is frustrating to watch him be a defensive liability, but you can't expect much from a 36-year-old unathletic big. Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder gets a B. Coming in second in the sixth man of the year race last season, many of us expected Schroeder to come off the bench for the Lakers as well. However, he came in expecting to start, and he got his wish, and he's actually held his own playing alongside LeBron. Early on in the season, he was consistently the Lakers' third best scoring option. His offense has dropped off a bit, his outside jumper isn't falling as consistently, and he continues to struggle with turnovers. But he has the ability to take guys off the dribble and get to the paint. And he's been impressive on defense this season. He's been pretty consistent on that end of the floor. Montrez Harrell. Montrez Harrell gets a B plus. So far, the reigning sixth man of the year has performed as advertised. He brings that energy off the bench. He goes after the ball, getting rebounds and scoring on those hustle plays. His numbers are down from last year, but that's because the Lakers don't need to rely on him for scoring. He has shown that his offense is not just scoring off of putbacks or spamming the pick and roll. This season, he's shown his ability to face up, put the ball on the floor, and shoot that mid-range shot. There was a point in this season where he was leading the league in isolation scoring percentage. The Lakers have allowed him to expand his game and not confine him to a specific role like he was last year with the Clippers. 
and of course critics will be quick to knock his defense. Obviously he's going to have trouble against centers like Jokic and other big men. The guy is only 6'7", but if utilized correctly and not expecting him to grow 5 inches, <coughs> Doc Rivers, then he can be useful on defense, especially against smaller lineups. And if he's playing alongside a guy like Anthony Davis, a lot of his defensive weaknesses can be masked. So overall, the new Lakers are doing fairly well. Most of them are meeting expectations, and of course there's room for improvement. But they are still adjusting to their new team and their new situation. But at this point in the season, they are in a good place in terms of their progress and fit. With these new additions, this Laker team is on pace to repeat as champions.